Thank you for joining us for Season 2, Episode 1 of Revolutionary War Rarities. Today, we are going to be discussing some of the crazy family relationships between our founding fathers that you may not be aware of. And as a change for Season 2, we're going to start off each episode with a trivia question. We will include the answer to the trivia somewhere within the podcast. The question may or may not have anything to do with the episode. So here is this episode's question. There was an organization that predated the Sons of Liberty. Actually, this organization ultimately evolved into the Sons of Liberty with many of the same members. So, can you name this organization that ultimately evolved into the Sons of Liberty? Stay tuned for the answer, and we hope you enjoy Season 2, Episode 1 of Revolutionary War Rarities. All in the Family Season 2. That's almost hard to say. Season 2, Episode 1. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Season 2, Episode 1 of Revolutionary War Rarities. My name is Jim Griffith. And my name is Jim Maple. Anyone, Jim, and you've done this yourself, I've done this myself, anyone who has done any level of genealogical research has most likely discovered many, many relationships they had no idea existed. It is very common occurrence, a very common occurrence, and is always very eye-opening when a rather famous name all of a sudden appears in your family tree. Well, during the Revolutionary War, there were many founding fathers and soldiers who happened to have very odd family relationships. Jim, here's one that might surprise you. Many people know the name Richard Henry Lee. He was the gentleman who initially proposed independence in the Second Continental Congress. As a matter of fact, that proposal is known as the Lee Resolution. The Declaration of Independence was a direct result of the Lee Resolution. However, did you know that Richard Henry Lee's brother-in-law was a man named William Shippen, Jr.? I know unless you're a graduate of Princeton University, where he was one of the trustees, you might not know that name. Well, the Shippen name became quite infamous when it was discovered that Peggy Shippen was the highest paid spy in the American Revolution. But she was a spy for the British and was the wife of Benedict Arnold. Now this is a little hard to follow, but Peggy Shippen, Benedict Arnold's wife, was William Shippen Jr.'s brother's granddaughter. <laughs> I'm not actually completely sure what you just told me, but kind of it's a so but so let's rehash it here. So William Shippen Jr., Richard Henry Lee's brother-in-law, would have been Peggy Shippen's great uncle. Okay, that was hard to follow, but incredibly interesting. Yeah. So let's keep that going. Uh, the highest paid British spy, Peggy Shippen, had an indirect relationship with one of the signers of the Declaration of Independence. Okay. How about this one? Peyton Randolph, another name that should be much better known in this country than it is. Some people refer to him as the first president of the United States since he served as the first president of the Continental Congress, of the first Continental Congress. Peyton Randolph was married to Elizabeth Harrison. Elizabeth Harrison's brother was a guy named Benjamin Harrison, who was a signer of the Declaration of Independence. So Peyton Randolph and Benjamin Harrison were brothers-in-law and both represented Virginia in the Continental Congress, along with other very famous names such as Thomas Jefferson, George Washington, and numerous others. Wait, before we leave Peyton Randolph, he had another famous relative. Peyton Randolph and Thomas Jefferson were cousins. As a matter of fact, Peyton Randolph was having dinner with Thomas Jefferson on October the 22nd, 1775 in Philadelphia, when Randolph suffered from a stroke and died. Okay, it is hard to describe these relationships because it is easy to get lost in the descriptions. So let's simplify the descriptions and just go with their relationship. Okay, here we go. Did you know that George Washington and Meriwether Lewis from the Lewis and Clark expedition were cousins? Okay. How about George Washington and Light Horse Harry Lee? They were also cousins. Well, Jim, here's a, here's a good one. Did you know that Ethan Allen of Fort Ticonderoga's fame was a second cousin of Nathan Hale? You'll recall that Nathan Hale's final words before he was hung by the British for spying were, I regret that I have only one life to lose for my country. 
Okay, and a few easy, here's a few easy ones. Of course, we know that John Adams and Samuel Adams yeah. were cousins. Richard Henry Lee and Francis Lightfoot Lee were both signers of the Declaration of Independence and were brothers. And their cousin was Light Horse Harry Lee, or Henry Lee III, and he was also the father of Robert E. Lee. Okay, let's stop right there and answer the trivia question for Season 2, Episode 1. And the question was, what was the name of the organization that evolved into the Sons of Liberty? And the answer to that question is the Loyal Nine. Members included Henry Bass, who was a cousin of Samuel Adams, who was also a member, Thomas Chase, Stephen Cleverly, Thomas Crafts, Benjamin Eddies, Joseph Field, John Smith, and George Trott. So what we have provided to you in this podcast is just an example of some of the family relationships that existed. When you combine all of these relationships with the fact that most of these individuals considered themselves to be British years before the Revolution, then the American Revolution became just one huge family fight. Not unlike a battle between a brother and sister fighting for the television remote or control of the thermostat. These battles started as arguments. Ultimately, they all ended with significant bloodshed, heartbreak, and families being torn apart. But today, the FAR salutes the strong families that helped create the United States of America. We realize that even for the ones who were fighting for the same side, there were still significant disagreements on how or when or if to declare independence, on how to fund a war, how to create a country, and ultimately, who would lead it. But their perseverance did indeed create a country that is still going strong today, and for that, we are thankful. My name is Jim Griffiths. And my name is Jim Maples, and we thank you for joining us today, and please be sure to join us for the next episode of Revolutionary War Rarity. This has been a production of the National Society Sons of the American Revolution, www.sar.org. Thank you again for joining us for another episode of Revolutionary War Rarities. Please don't forget to join our Facebook group, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and click the bell so that you will be notified when a new episode is released. Oh yeah, and don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcast application as well. We will see you again in two weeks with another episode of Revolutionary War Rarities.